PCI DSS 4.0 went into effect in March 2024 and most merchants still don't understand what actually changed. They think it's just an update, a few tweaks, some new requirements added to the old one. It's not. PCI DSS 4.0 represent the most significant change to the payment card security standard since its creation. And if you are approaching it like a simple update, you are going to fail your next audit. Now here's what makes this dangerous if you're trying to break into cybersecurity. Companies desperately need people who understand these changes and the transition period ends soon. And most organizations haven't started addressing what matters most. They are focused on technical requirements everyone talks about. But the requirements that will actually fail audit are the ones nobody is discussing. Now in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you exactly what changed in PCI DSS 4.0, why most organizations are focusing on the wrong things and how understanding this makes you valuable to any company that processes payments. I'm told up by Michael, a cybersecurity expert and a career coach. If you want to understand compliance requirements, there are great real job opportunities hit subscribe right now it's free so let's start with what everyone gets wrong about pci dss 4.0 most people think pci dss 4.0 is about adding new security controls it's not version 4.0 represents a philosophical shift from prescriptive checkbox compliance to customized risk-based security in pci dss 321 requirement told you exactly what to do right change password every 90 days, conduct quarterly vulnerability scans, maintain firewall rules. You could comply by following instructions exactly. No thinking required. Just implement what the standard says and then you pass. PCI DSS 4.0 introduces something called customized implementation. Now for many requirements, you now have two options. Option one is the defined approach, the traditional way of meeting requirements with specific prescriptive controls. Option two is a customized approach where you design your own controls that achieve the same security objective. Then document and validate that your approach is effective. See, this sounds great in theory. Flexibility, innovation, tailored security. But in reality, most organizations will struggle with customized approaches because they require maturity most merchants don't have. You understand? So to use a customized approach, you need to thoroughly understand the security objective design controls that demonstrably meet that objective. You know, document your control design and rationale. Test that your controls work and prove all this to your assessor. That's significantly more sophisticated than implement what the standard tells you. But here is where it gets interesting for your career. Even if companies stick with defined approaches, version 4.0 changed many requirements in ways that break current implementations. And some changes are not optional. The changes that will actually cause audit failures are more pervasive than what people discuss online. First major change, expanded multi-factor authentication requirements across the entire Cardoda data environment. Version 321 required MFA for remote access to the CDE. That was it. Version 4.0 requires MFA for all access to the CDE, not just remote access. That includes console access, admin access, and access from within your trusted network. See, this isn't just enabling MFA on your VPN. This is implementing MFA for every admin logging into every system that touches card order data, including when they are sitting in the office. Most organizations enable MFA for remote access years ago and think they are compliant. They are not anymore. Second major change is this. Targeted risk analysis now required for many requirements. This is the change nobody is talking about. Okay, And it's going to cause massive audit failures. Version 4.0 introduces something called targeted risk analysis for specific requirements. So if your environment doesn't meet the defined approach exactly, you need to conduct and document a targeted risk analysis justify your alternative approach this isn't full customized implementation it's something in between you are mostly following the defined approach but with specific variations that you need to risk justify for example password complexity requirements now include a targeted risk analysis option so if you don't want to enforce all the standard password complexity rules you can use alternative method, but you need to document your risk analysis supporting that decision. Most organizations have variations from standard requirements. They just never documented why or assessed the risk. Now, 
that's non-compliance assessors will ask show me your targeted risk analysis justify this approach if you don't have one you fill that requirement you know i get a lot of messages from people asking how they can break into cybersecurity. it's tough especially if you're like how i used to be stuck in a job that doesn't pay enough or feeling like you've hit a wall i get it that is why i created something more than just these videos you're watching something structured practical and focused on real action it's called the five day cyber security job challenge this isn't just content you binge and forget we're talking hands-on learning real skills and daily guidance two hours a day for five days it's all designed to push you from thinking about change to actually making it happen look i love making these youtube videos but let's be honest how many times have you watched a great video thought i'm going to do something about that and then didn't that is why this challenge is different it's designed to be your support okay we're not just learning you're giving task actionable steps every single day with live q and a's where i personally help you avoid mistakes and land the jobs that will change your life watching my videos is great but if you want to go beyond watching if you're ready to take real steps toward a $250,000 career a year, come join the challenge. The link is in the description below. You can't miss it. Now, enjoy the rest of this video, but don't forget to come back when you're ready to take that next step. Third major change. Roles and responsibilities must be documented for all PCIDSS activities. Now, this is a new requirement that catches everyone off guard. Version 4.0 requires you to document roles and responsibilities for completing all activities in each PCI DSS requirement, not just who is responsible for PCI compliance generally, specifically who is responsible for each requirement activities and how are those responsibilities documented and communicated. Now, for example, who is responsible for reviewing firewall rules? How is that documented? Who is responsible for monitoring field logging attempts? Where is that role defined? Most organizations can answer these questions conversationally, but they don't have formal documentation. That is now non-compliant. You need documented roles and responsibilities for every PCI requirement, not just general security responsibilities. Okay. Now here is where you become valuable. Companies need people who can create this documentation, track compliance with new requirements, and prepare for audit under the new standard. This is in highly technical work. It's understanding requirements, documenting processes, coordinating across teams, and organizing evidence. Now, if you can say in interview that I understand that PCI DSS 4.0 introduced customized implementation options and targeted risk analysis requirement that fundamentally change how organizations demonstrate compliance, particularly around MFA expansion and documentation of roles, responsibilities. You see, you immediately sound more knowledgeable than most candidates. Beyond the specific changes, version 4.0 introduced entire new requirements that most organizations are not even aware of yet. What's a new requirement? Anti-phishing controls must be implemented. So version 4.0 explicitly requires technical controls to detect and protect against phishing attacks. This isn't just security awareness training. It's technical controls like email authentication controls, anti-phishing solutions, and browser-based protections. Most organizations have some of these, but not all, okay? And now, you need to demonstrate comprehensive anti-phishing technical controls, not just training. Now, another new requirement is script management for payment pages. See, if you have a website that processes payment, you need to manage and monitor all scripts on payment pages to prevent tampering. This addresses the rise of web skimming attacks where attackers inject malicious scripts into payment pages to steal card data. You need to maintain an inventory of all scripts on payment pages, implement controls to prevent unauthorized changes, and monitor for unauthorized modification. Most merchants have no idea what scripts are running on their payment pages, let alone whether they are authorized or monitored. Another new requirement is inventories must be maintained for all system components. 
version 4.0 requires a comprehensive inventory of all system components in scope for PCI DSS. You need to document all system components, their functions, and how they are included in or connected to the CDE. See, most organizations have partial inventories. They know about major systems, but not every component. Now, that incomplete knowledge is a compliance gap. Now, if you want to know what this means for your career, this is it. Companies processing card payments desperately need people who understand PCI DSS 4.0 changes and can help them prepare. These roles typically pay $65,000 to $85,000 for entry-level positions, and the work involves understanding requirements, creating documents, coordinating evidence collection, and supporting audit. See, you don't need deep technical expertise. You need to understand the standard, organize information, communicate clearly, and track many moving pieces. If you're targeting retail, e-commerce, payment processing, or any company that handles credit cards, PCI DSS 4.0 knowledge makes you immediately more valuable. If you want to know what to do right now, this is it. Read the actual PCI DSS 4.0 standard. It's free on the PCI Security Standard Council website, okay? Focus on understanding what changed from 3 to 1, particularly around customized implementation and targeted risk analysis. Build a sample compliance tracking system showing you understand what needs to be monitored under the new standard. MFA implementation status, targeted risk analysis documentation, roles and responsibilities documentation, script inventories for payment pages. See, you practice explaining PCI DSS 4.0 changes in simple terms. When someone asks what change, can you explain the shift from prescriptive to risk-based compliance? Can you explain why targeted risk analysis matter? Can you describe the MFA expansion? Target companies that process payment and emphasize your understanding of the new requirement. Use keywords like PCI DSS 4.0, customized implementation, targeted risk analysis, and payment security in your resume or your applications. Now here's the bottom line. PCI DSS 4.0 isn't just an update. It's a fundamental shift in how payment security is approached. Companies that treat it like a simple version upgrade will fail their audit. Companies need people who understand these changes and can guide implementation. That creates opportunity for anyone willing to learn the new standard and help organizations adapt. Don't wait for companies to figure this out on their own. Be the person who already understands what changed and can help them prepare. Now, if this showed you a compliance area creating real job opportunities, subscribe for more industry-specific career strategies. And in my usual manner, I hope I'm leaving you today better than I met you. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.